Hey guys, what's going on? Blaine back for another Netflix review, and today I'm going to be talking about New Gods, Neja Reborn. I'm not really going to get into the details of the work of fiction it's based on, or any of the history behind it, I'm just going to be purely focusing on my opinion of the movie itself. I will say that this movie is based on a novel called Investiture of the Gods, which is a really, really old piece of history, several centuries old to be precise. The movie centers on the character Yung Zhang, who lives with his clan in the fictional city of Dong Bai, and at the time that the movie takes place, the entire community as well as the world around it is undergoing a severe water shortage. Yung Zhang and his clan work together as sort of Robin Hood-like figures in order to take away water from the people who are controlling it and giving it back to the poor people who need that water in order to survive. And it's not long into the movie's initial events that he comes across a man that has mysterious magical powers. After coming into conflict with this man whose name we learn is Ao Bing, Yu Zhang accidentally discovers that he has the power of an ancient god buried within him whose name is Neja as his body completely erupts in fire and he just completely mows down everything everyone in his path, which forces Ao Bing to retreat and regroup to his own clan. And this starts off a whole cavalcade of events as it's one clan against another, and that's the central conflict of the movie. So what started as a science fiction flavored futuresque take on a Robin Hood scenario quickly delves into the supernatural as there's all kinds of Chinese folklore and mythology that's being presented in the scenery within the span of just a few minutes. And I have to admit, as someone who's not well versed in Chinese mythology and folklore, aside from a few figures like the Monkey King and dragons, that sort of thing, I found it hard to really follow along with this movie story. And it's not just because the movie is in Chinese either. I can follow along with the subtitles pretty well for the most part, but I feel like there's so many characters that we have to be paying attention to, not just with the team of good guys in one clan, but with all the bad guys that are present in the other clan. Some of the supporting characters who help Yun Zhang in his journey, like Jing Zhang and Kasha, they don't really have all that much personality to them. They're just more or less there to help move the story along. Although they do have a few scenes here and there where they do stand out, particularly Kasha, when an event happens during that conflict with Ao Bing in the beginning, and we start to see more of her personality develop about halfway through the movie or so. But even those bits of character development that are here and there in this movie don't really feel like they last all that long. It feels like they only last for about 30 seconds at a time at most, and then the movie quickly jumps ahead to whatever big spectacle that it wants to show in front of you. There's a lot of talk about the Dragon Pearl, which is the main MacGuffin of the movie, and then it talks about all these gods that are trying to vie for supremacy over the world by having control of that pearl, and then there's a ton of other mythological creatures that are thrown in for good measure. There's just so many things and variables going all over the place that I just didn't know how to follow along with the story. However, as confusing as I found the story to be, I found that the action scenes in this movie more than made up for it. They were by far the best thing that this movie has going for it. Not only is there an absolute metric ton of these action scenes in the movie, but each and every single one of them feels more unique than the last. Seriously, the sheer creativity behind the action scenes in this movie is absolutely astounding. It starts off realistic enough at the beginning of the movie when Yu Zhang hasn't reawakened his abilities as Neja yet, and then as the movie progresses and he starts getting more comfortable with his powers, then the scenes really start to ramp up in craziness. The movie literally opens up with an action scene that's like five minutes long. It's this big kick-ass motorcycle chase that happens all around Dong Bai. I was blown away by the scene, and it just kept getting better from there. There's just so many bright colors and imaginative scenery that is just constantly assaulting your senses, and I love it. I love when a movie like this, especially an animated movie, takes full advantage of its color palette and the fight scenes in this movie. Oh my god, the fight scenes are incredible. This is definitely one area of the movie that fully benefits from it being animated. There's just no way that you'd be able to replicate the craziness that takes place in this movie in a live action comparison. It just wouldn't happen. There's a downhill desert chase that occurs about a third of the way in the movie when Yu Zhang is coming to terms with his powers. He starts combining his powers with his motorcycle and it was just crazy to see so much fire erupting on screen and enemies falling over themselves just acting like idiots. And then a random jellyfish lady spawned out of nowhere. I was like, 
I have no idea what is happening here, but it's awesome, so I'll go with it. Honestly, there are far too many action scenes in this movie to be talking about in this review. You just simply have to see it for yourself to experience how awesome the whole thing is. The only complaint that I have for the action scenes, and some other scenes in general, is that the animation speed seems a little bit off. During some of the movie's more intense action scenes, and there are a lot of them, some of the characters move a little bit faster than they should have, to the point that they start to look really stiff and robotic in their presentation, and it's very distracting distracting to look at in the middle of a crazy action scene. I found the opposite to be true in certain cases as well, in which case a character isn't moving too fast, but rather is moving too slow. This usually happens during more story-oriented bits in the movie, in which case a character might be ruminating over details of the plot as it moves along, and as these characters are thinking to themselves, everything seems to move in an almost frame-by-frame -frame movement, almost like it was a slideshow, and that too is also distracting to see in a movie. It doesn't really happen in enough that it bothered me all that much, it's more of a nitpick than anything, but it's clear when these moments happen that this movie definitely doesn't have the budget of, say, a Disney movie, for example. To be fair though, considering the fact that this isn't a Disney movie to begin with, I was blown away by what they were able to accomplish with this movie. I also love that they included the Monkey King in this movie. He's one of the few figures that I recognize from Chinese mythology, and as far as his presentation in this movie goes, he definitely doesn't disappoint. Overall, my first impression of New Gods Neja Reborn is that it's a complete mess story-wise, and I honestly was thinking about giving it a mixed rating, but now that I think back about how awesome the action scenes are and just how entertained I was from beginning to end, I gotta say that this movie was a blast. If you want to see the closest resemblance to a Marvel slash DC superhero movie that's based on ancient Chinese folklore and mythology, and you want to have a steampunk slash cyberpunk vibe on top of it all, you gotta check this out, because this movie will definitely tick all those boxes. I found the story and characters to be completely forgettable, but they're not the reason that you'll remember this movie anyway. The main reason you'll remember it is for the entertainment, because this movie delivers it in spades. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up my review of New Gods Neja Reborn. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the Japanese psychological thriller, Ride or Die. Bye bye!